In 2020, this video game industry was rocked by a number of allegations and accusations. Essentially, the games industry was being hit with its own Me Too movement moment. We saw companies such as Activision Blizzard and Ubisoft come under direct fire. These are companies that have talked about diversity, inclusivity, an equal environment, environment safe for everybody. That's something that they've talked about, about their company, about who they are, but unfortunately it just was always a lie, it wasn't true. We had dozens upon dozens of developers come forward with stories, experiences that they had behind the scenes in which they had higher-ups who abused them, there was misconduct, there was just a lot of things that should not have happened. We also had cover-ups at the top in which executives just blatantly ignored what was happening. One figure who has been brought up often with this is Bobby Kotick who has faced zero repercussions for everything that he himself has done. But anyway, that was what was happening in 2020. And it wasn't just Ubisoft and Blizzard developers that came under fire. We also saw other figures such as Chris Avalon, a prominent gaming figure. His credits are just, his resume is ridiculous. A guy worked on Fallout 2 as a designer, worked on Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, uh, KOTOR 2, who's a lead designer, lead writer, Alpha Protocol, lead designer, lead writer, Fallout New Vegas, he was a writer, and he was a project lead on most of the excellent DLCs, worked on Wasteland 2, Prey, an underrated arcane experience, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, the guy has a crazy resume, and by many he is considered one of the best video game writers in this industry. I just looked to Dying Light 2 as a great example of this, I was so excited for that game because he was involved in it, and unfortunately because of the allegations that ended up following his entire writing everything he had written up for that game was just deleted and unfortunately I think Dying Light 2 suffered because of that but the thing is with Avalon he's mostly been known for his professional behavior at least that's what my opinion was of him in the past and on Twitter as far back as 2017 you have him interacting and supporting other individuals that have had bad experiences in this industry so it was just a major surprise to a lot of people that he was being well these allegations from the gamer this is a great example of it report game writer Writer Chris Avalon alleged to have drugged and that woman. Uh, the article's main meat says goes from this figure Carissa who says Chris Avalon is an abusive abrasive conniving that he got me blackout drunk where he pounced on me in front of other guys so on and so forth you get the gist of it. Uh, and then this individual also said that she witnessed Avalon use the same tactics on far younger women and even regrets setting her best friend up with Avalon later on. Now Avalon is not perfect. He has made mistakes and he's owned up to them in the past but nothing has reached this level of seriousness in which you go from maybe an uncomfortable interaction to actual misconduct. Unfortunately, this was not the only allegation similar to Carissa's, as another individual, Kelly Bristol, aka Stabitha, wrote on her Twitter account that Chris Avalon had inappropriately touched her. These posts went viral on social media, and very quickly afterwards, Chris Avalon's career in this gaming industry was basically over. At the time, Avalon was involved in three major projects, and almost immediately before he could even respond, he was out of those jobs and these studios developers immediately distanced themselves and downplayed his involvement in those games' as development. Uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 developer Paradox put out a statement to the press saying Avalon briefly worked with the Bloodlines 2 writing team early in the development of the game. Through an iterative creative process, however, none of his contributions remain in the game that Hardsuit Labs is continuing to develop. Again, remember, this is 2020. Dying Light 2 developer Techland also put out their own statement on Twitter saying that we treat matters of this with the utmost care and have no tolerance for such behaviors. It applies to both our employees as well as external consultants, Chris among them. This is why together with Avalon, we've decided to end our cooperation. And then Gato Studios. Chris Avalon is no longer associated with us or the Waylanders project. And one of the lead writers on this said that Waylanders has very little writing by him as it stands. And I'll be taking a look at his scenes. No one on the team knew anything about this. We're handling it and I'm open to feedback. We also saw some of his former colleagues, a Jedi Fallen Order developer, saying that they worked with Avalon, I never saw his alarming behavior, and that said, not only do I believe the woman coming forward, I am furious at what he's done to them, to those women, I love and respect your courage. That was the main sentiment from all of the colleagues, everybody in the games industry. Avalon was thrown to the trash, nobody decided, maybe we should look into these allegations further. None of the studios at all even wanted to investigate them. And if they had, they would have seen the glaring issues with them. 
Now, before we even get into Chris Avalon's immediate response and the libel lawsuit that he filed against these individuals, there's actual evidence that emerged almost instantaneously which dispute the allegations that were made against him. We had Carissa Barrows. The issue with her allegation is that mere days, a month or two afterwards, there were Twitter DMs with her and somebody else which talk about Chris Avalon as being a complete gentleman. We go to Niche Gamer for this article. A Red Eye Creative Studio owner Jeff Johnson had only heard about this situation thanks to a Forbes article on the libel lawsuit. Johnson claims that while working on Marauder Shields, a webcomic, a Barrows, Carissa Barrows had been brought on as a volunteer for the podcast interviews, and Barrows stated that she had made out with Chris the first night there at Dragon Con 2012 when the alleged incident happened. And further screenshots of Twitter DMs between Johnson and Barrows from October 30th, she uses Johnson's description of Avalon as a con boyfriend and describes him in complimentary terms, she yet again describes Avalon as a complete gentleman. Again, this was at the time I believe 2012 these DMs are from, and this individual, uh, Jeff Johnson, he saved them. And again, this directly disputes what she was saying about him now, calling him, you know, a predator. Now the other individual, Kelly, I'll just say her first name, Stabitha, again, she said that he inappropriately touched her, but again, mere days after this supposed incident, we have this tweet in which she said that stuff has not happened to me and she responded to somebody who had said that they had been touched inappropriately. So this just, again, both of these individuals that came forward with very serious accusations, you have evidence days after the incident in which these individuals directly contradict what they said about Avalon. And that is why Avalon came forward in 2021 with his own response. This was his initial response and he had a long essay about everything about his experiences with these individuals and why he pretty much said it was all lies. And he posted screenshots of them in which, yes, they look like they were their friends. We have this screenshot of him, one of the few gentlemen left in the world. That's what she says about Avalon in August of 2012. There's another screenshot from PAX East 2013 with them together again, looking like they are colleagues, friends. And then Avalon within this statement in which he says he's breaking his silence, he says, so when Carissa and her close friend Kelly, the two individuals that accused him of being predator on social media in 2020, I didn't try to shout them down or silence them. I listened. My only response, which I maintained at the time of their accusations, was I believed Kelly and Carissa made these claims because of the bad split I had with their friend Jackie many, many years ago in 2014. This felt like revenge at the time of Carissa and Kelly's accusations. I had little evidence to show this change except for Carissa's own pattern of correspondence, a correspondence that changed dramatically when Jackie and I began to have problems. Now much of the rest of this response is again a very detailed breakdown of his relationship with these individuals, everything that had happened. He talks about Chris, how she deleted 60,000 tweets from her Twitter account. He talks about Kelly, how she brought forward a witness that disputed directly what she had accused him of. And then we actually get into the consequences of all of this and the actual cancel culture that Chris Avalon has experienced. He says, there were consequences to their accusations, of course. When Carissa and Kelly made their allegations, I was cut off from almost every studio I was working with. I didn't fight any of this. You can't. Cancel culture being what it is, the companies can't fight it either, or else they are attacked too. Companies can't even ask for time to look into it without coming across as not believing the accusations, as unfounded as they are, because even the hint of a delay or wanting to find out more will be judged and will get them cancelled too. Essentially, Avalon understood the position that all of these studios had, and... He said it was the right decision that they made, but it was unfortunate because he said that he knew that this was obviously all unfounded. Now, he did furthermore talk about the press and how they actually immediately responded to the situation. He says, I should point out that some of the press didn't reach out to me at all before painting their own lurid interpretation of events with their own embellishments. Sean Murray of The Gamer in particular. You can read it in his article and you can see the unedited URL that references it to this day. And if you don't know what he's actually referring to, I can't even say it on video, but it has that very bad R word. But in Chris Avalon's response, he finishes his remark saying, I spent the last year trying to persuade myself that these acts were done out of a misguided sense of self-righteousness. I have tried to correct the record, dispel misconceptions, allow voices to be heard, but it is clear I was wrong. The attacks against me were made from malice. I'm ready to defend myself and setting the record straight is the first step. And that is exactly what happened because what followed was a libel lawsuit against these individuals and that is something that has been playing out in the courts for the last year or so. But we finally have an update and it does appear that Chris Avalon has achieved victory. 
Taking to Twitter, he said, The case concerning the allegations made against me in 2020 have been resolved. I understand that Ms. Barrows has requested to retract her statements to the media about me. And in this picture, the parties resolved the matter and claims were dismissed with prejudice pursuant to a confidential settlement that provides for a seven-figure payment to Avalon. And in their joint statement, he says, uh, After engaging with Mr. Avalon, this is Ms. Barrows, Carissa Barrows, we have prepared the following statement. Mr. Avalon never did any of that to either of us. We have no knowledge that he has ever done any of that to any woman. We have no knowledge that Mr. Avalon has ever misused corporate funds. Anything we have previously said or written about Mr. Avalon to the contrary was not our intent. We wanted to support women in this industry. In doing so, our words have been misinterpreted to suggest specific allegations of misconduct that were neither expressed nor intended. Ended. We are passionate about the safety, security, and agency of women, minorities, LGBTQIA plus persons, and every other community that has seen persecution in the video game industry. We believe Mr. Avalon shares a desire to protect and uplift those communities. We believe that he deserves a full return to the industry and support him in those endeavors. And that is both Carissa Barrows and Kelly Ray Bristol, both the individuals that previously had accused him of inappropriate behavior, actual misconduct. And then Avalon's own response to this was, I appreciate the willingness of Barrows and Bristol to work with us in addressing issues with the game community, and their advocacy is to be commended and supported. There are still many real challenges that we face, but I'm confident that we can face them together. In the spirit of these goals, I would ask everyone to respect the privacy of these individuals and use this opportunity as a means to listen to all voices in improving our culture and our communities. So basically, Chris Avalon has won his lawsuit. It was taken out of courts. They reached a settlement. He supposedly got seven figures years out of it. I'm guessing that's a lot in attorney fees, but he also got this response, which is justice. Now, while the rest of this video game industry, you know, welcome him back, such as these individuals implied at the end of their statement saying they wanted him to have a full return, I don't know. I have doubts about it, just because I feel like opinions have been formed about Chris Avalon. It really is sad, kind of disgusting how this all turned out, just because all of those articles, such as that Gamer article, is still up. There has been no adjustments made to it, and I don't know if there ever will be. Chris Avalon is forever marked in this industry. Just the accusations alone may, may make it that he never gets a job with any AAA game studio ever again. And even with this conclusion, we have responses like this under his Twitter post, in which Epic, simply Epic my good sir, doing that to women and throwing money in litigation to make them shut up. Simply epic. You win the internet. Those are the responses that some people are making. And there are obviously already industry figures that have shared that same sentiment. And as Avalon even responded to this, he said the defendants were rep represented pro bono and that information is publicly available. As to why I pursue litigation in general, your response is a clear indication of what attempting to ask facts be examined on the internet means. It's largely useless unless done through due process. You made the point very clear in your response and for that, I thank you. Quick little intermission I wanted to add here because Eric Kane of Forbes provided some new information. He's the one journalist who has at least been a little skeptical, a little open-minded. He's got a lot of crap for it, but he actually did speak with Chris Avalon's lawyer. He got the actual statement with the signatures of the accusers, and he also got information from the lawyers that confirmed that he is receiving a seven-figure payout. So you're seeing a lot of spin on the internet trying to make it out to be that no, Avalon really didn't win this, but no, this is, this is what happened. There is no other narrative. There is no other story. He is cleared. And this is the battle that Chris Avalon will now have to go against because, again, that narrative is just not going away, even despite what these accusers now say in their new statements. Anyway, I am rooting for Chris Avalon. I hope we see his involvement in more games in the future. I don't know if he's going to work with Obsidian ever again, but that's also because of other stuff that happened in the past in which he said he would never work with them. That was before all of this drama. But... Yeah, I, I don't have this mindset of not believing women at all. I think that's ridiculous. I think some of these stories, especially the Blizzard and Ubisoft stuff, it's really horrifying accounts. And a lot of those people actually have evidence to support what happened. I just think that being skeptical about some of these situations is the right thing. I don't think that jumping to a conclusion is the right move, and so many people in this industry, so many people in entertainment just seem to think that is the right thing to do. And here we have an example of somebody who may never get an industry job again just because of these accusations. But do let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video or if you found any informative value. And make sure to follow my other social media accounts for updates on new videos. Links are always down in the description below. I'm most active on Twitter giving opinions on news that I do not always get into video form so do make sure to follow me over there. Also check out my discord for all sorts of discussion on games and again thank you for joining. Consider subscribing for more videos like this and I'll see you later.